Hey, what's up guys? Mario back again with another YouTube video. Today I'm going to cover Netflix, uh, amazing earnings report. I'm going to go in details of the fundamental and why I decided to add to my long-term investment in Netflix and also had an opportunity to day trade it as well today. So I'm going to cover both the investment side of it uh, in terms of the fundamentals, the technicals, uh, and one very, very important key uh, is buybacks, stock buybacks. Very, very important. I'm going to discuss those in very uh, good detail because a lot of people don't understand that and why that is important, especially if you're a long-term investor. Uh, now, besides all that, of course, I'm going to cover my day trade. I did make a really nice day trade today, uh, and I'm going to discuss that in below. Now, don't forget to ask questions down below, guys, in the YouTube comments. Um, I am a long-term investor as well as a day trader. Again, all these YouTube videos are for learning and entertainment purposes. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe down below on the YouTube channel. Let me share my screen and let's get started. All right. So let's go over first uh, the, the chart, the technical side, I guess you could say. So in terms of the technical side, uh, Netflix, you know, it hasn't really been doing much. It's been ranging uh, from uh, 550s to uh, 450s for the last almost six months since July. Uh, they did benefit from the pandemic but after, after the first initial move from uh, the lows of the March of last year to, uh, you could say, July, it hasn't done much. And a lot of it had to do because of the revenue in competition from like Disney and revenue. Uh, they really didn't really look much. And also subscriber growth didn't look as good as what uh, analysts expected. But what changed? To change, what really changed was uh, the report they had yesterday. And I'm going to go over, the, go, go over that in detail. Uh, and the most important thing of, of that report is how the market reacted. It broke 52-week highs, so it's all-time highs, a uh, huge volume. We're talking about over 10 times the average volume was traded yesterday, uh, and that caused the stock to go over, over up over 15%. So that's what I'm excited because not only did the fundamentals good, but the market in general are approving of those fundamental changes, and they're buying a stock, and this volume tells the truth. So let's talk about, let's go over the, the uh, really quickly in terms of the, uh, the, the fundamental, and then I'm going to go over the, uh, the day trade. So go over really quickly over the earnings. Netflix surges 50% on record high after blockbuster earnings show company added more subscribers and forecasts. Subscribers are, are key guys. So subscribers lead to more revenue and growth. And that's really what matters because companies can always increase the, uh, the monthly fees. They've done that already with Netflix several times already, and that continued to happen. And again, as long as you have more subscribers, hey, you could easily increase revenue by increasing the monthly fee. Very, very simple. Um, so that's very, very important. So again, uh, the video streaming service added record 37 million paid subscribers in 2020. Netflix is best to generate enough cash to end its borrowing spree and potentially fund share buybacks. This is huge, guys. Buybacks, stock buybacks. Now, and that's what I kind of want to talk about, uh, why buybacks are so important. You know, so kind of go over in here in uh, Invisipedia, what a stock uh, buybacks and the breakdown. Pretty much uh, key takeaways is a stock buyback occurs when a company buys back its shares from the marketplace the effect of buyback is to reduce the number of outstanding shares on the market, which increases the ownership stake of uh, stakeholders. So in a way, essentially, the price of the stock kind of goes up. It reduces the, the volume, it reduces the float, and the price kind of goes up, and the ownership of, of pretty much stakeholders goes up. Now, a company might buy back shares because it believes the market uh, has discounted its shares too steeply, to invest in itself or to improve its financial ratios. And in my opinion, Netflix is probably doing a little bit of both. They believe that Netflix is probably undervalued and they also want to improve their financial ratios like earnings per share, uh, uh, price per earnings, all that kind of stuff, you know? So um, definitely uh, I want to kind of go over that. So let's kind of look uh, really quickly on, on the Netflix in, in terms of uh, what's happening. So right now, Netflix, Netflix is a uh, $260 billion market capitalization stock. That's what it's worth. Uh, and this is where the buybacks is gonna definitely benefit the price per earnings. Uh, you know, if they do buy stock, they're gonna lower the price per earnings, making it more fav favorable in terms of valuations for other large investors and institutions to buy. 
Uh, of course, that's also going to benefit uh, forward price earnings, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and this is where, what matters, the, the shares of standing. So right now, there's 441 million shares of standing. And again, it all depends on how many uh, shares or how much money they're willing to, to, to buy back in terms of shares. And what it essentially that does, guys, it will reduce this. So instead of maybe having 441 shares of standing or a 434 million share float, that may go to 300 or even 200. Uh, so if the volume stays the same in terms of uh, average daily volume uh, traded, um, that will uh, essentially kind of increase the stock of the price because you're reducing the you're reducing the the the, uh, the supply. So um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with economics class, but the, the terms of prices are determined by supply and demand curve. So when you have the same amount of demand, but then you reduce the supply, uh, the price of whatever it be, either product or service, goes up. So essentially, that was what could happen if Netflix decided to buy that, their stock. So very, very, very important, again, why I am bullish on, on Netflix. So not only that, but this is what I really like too. Look at these tier one analyst upgrades, UBS. Uh, they went from neutral to buy, price target of 540 to 650. Wells Fargo, another tier one um, bank, NLS bank, equal, they upgraded from equal weight to overweight. So they're, they're pretty much saying, hey, buy more than your average investment on this stock. And they're targeting a price target of 700, from 510 to 700. And DBS Bank, another uh, uh, analyst said a price target uh, uh, 650. So let's take a look at where uh, Netflix is trading right now. It's trading at 575. Now the most bullish uh, call is 700. And this is by, yeah, Wells Fargo. So this is what they're targeting. And if you think about it, if you just do a quick math, you know, 700 minus whatever the price of the stock is right now. So 700 uh, minus 575. Uh, okay, now that's 125 divided by 575. So we're looking at over there, uh, we're looking at a around a 21 to 22% uh, return on investment in the next, I don't know, it could be a month or so, a uh, month, uh, three to six months. Uh, and again, that could also change. And again, this could change as well if Netflix decides to buy their stock. They haven't announced it yet, uh, but they're thinking about it. Uh, and when Netflix says something, especially during earnings report, they're serious. So again, this could be even higher in terms of return. So wanted to quickly mention that. Now uh, let's go over the day trade. Well, before I go over the day trade, I want to kind of look at the uh, what you know long-term investors or actually swing traders are thinking as well. And now, because it broke on high volume to all time highs, uh, this is uh, a very common uh, in swing trading uh, type of uh, setup. Uh, some people call it a power gapper. Uh, some people call it an earnings breakout. There's so many ways to call this, uh, but because it broke above all time highs on high volume, especially in a really good catalyst, like fundamental catalyst like earnings report, uh, this uh, in, in the terms of a swing trade, uh, looks really uh, good. Uh, so a lot of what a lot of swing traders do is they usually buy these type of gaps. Um, they put their stop below a very important technical level like 550, and they like to sell any pushes to to all time highs above. You could say, um, you know, 600s or 620s, and their target tends to kind of be in it, trying to like you know ride this trend uh, for the next uh, couple months or weeks. Uh, so that's pretty much on the technical side. Now on the day trading side, again, I did day trade this today because it had such a huge move. It broke out of earnings. Um, to me, it was a second day continuation uh, long as a day trade. So I, again, especially when uh, a stock breaks up, it breaks out with high volume. Um, my goal is to buy the second day move uh, on a midpoint. And that's pretty much what exactly what I did. Now, I did notice price hovering near uh, the midpoint, uh, but I felt like the midpoint was still going to be the right, correct uh, place to enter as a day trade because the S1 pivot was way too low over here. My thought process, okay, in worst case scenario, the midpoint doesn't hold. Um, I could add a 570 um, and, and because, uh, and also even the S1. Um, you know, because I do like to kind of have a large ranges to kind of 
you know, uh, manage my risk. It just gives me more flexibility. Uh, what I really liked about this move is because, um, you know, so it has such a nice, uh, again, earnings, the fundamental analysis, the story, the volume was so good yesterday. I felt that a lot of investors were going to buy any a small little, uh, you know, wash in the, in the morning uh, to the pivot and go for like a red or green move. So if you look at the open, it opened pretty much weak. It hit the midpoint exactly at my level. I got in and literally just spiked, went uh, red to green, green minute. It broke above yesterday's previous close. So in terms of the, 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 the percentage, it was up and it was green. Now, of course, it is down 1%, almost 2%, uh, but in the morning, that was green. So I took the profit right away. I took the quick profits just because my risk to reward was met and I took the trade off. Now it's downtrending, but again, in terms of the day trade, it's over. The high probability day trade is over. But in terms of the long term, in terms of investing long term, the opportunity is still there. Also, is a swing trader, swing trade as well. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, now. I hope all this information makes sense, guys. Again, these videos are for learning entertainment purposes. Uh, I am both a long-term investor as well as a day trader. So when I see opportunities, I take them. And I also discuss them with you. So again, any questions about Netflix? Actually, you guys let me know what you guys think. You know, write them down in the YouTube comments. Uh, don't forget to ask those questions. I do answer all of them. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the YouTube uh, channel down below. And you guys will hear from me soon. Have a good one, guys. Take care.